Today I am playing the FM23 Alpha version, and I'm going to dive deep into a headline feature that I have been studying. But first, I'm going to make myself a 7 foot 3 manager in charge of Eintracht Frankfurt. Now straight from the off, we can see that our board culture is to sign players under the age of 23 for the first team. And we're going to be looking at recruitment focus to help us out. But first, we're going to go to the squad planner, which Tom FM is going to be doing a video on. And if we go to the, the full squad screen, it's basically the squad depth page from last year and we can kind of determine where we might be looking to sign a player so i'm really looking at that right midfield spot maybe another center midfielder who will be good going forward and well actually to be fair the dlp position is somewhere we are quite um lacking and maybe a striker because mario gertz is more of a center midfielder and alario is kind of slow he's only 11 acceleration to pace so those are the things that we need to be looking for now if we do go to our scouting and our recruitment focus we can see there are already active recruitment focuses and that is down to the scouts that are already at the club you will all have that every single time you load up a different team but we're going to be doing our own now you can look through these there is obviously some good options and there's actually a few uh, young players as well under the age of 23 that might work well with our board restrictions as well that we have for transfers but we're gonna set up our own recruitment focuses and see how they work so let's set up a recruitment focus for that holding midfielder role. Three star is where we want them to be as that is already better than what we have. Let's set an age maximum there as well, make it a top priority and also add in nations that we want to search in, which by the way will be limited depending on the database size that you load into the game. We can assign the scouts and there's also options to add specifics should we wish, but for now, let's just leave it at this. And once you confirm, you can click on here and already we can see there is a player there. And that scouts have found from previous matches of our focus search. Let me quickly show you how to load the database to get all of the nations. Now, just to quickly show you what I mean by your database, these are the leagues I have loaded, okay? But if you go up here and go to advance on your custom database, this is where you can add the players. So I've gone through and added the top, the players from top clubs in every different continent and on the nations that I want specifically players from top divisions the more players so obviously these nations are usually the nations where I tend to see quite a lot of very good wonder kids coming through the youth academies that's what I've done and that leads to around about 67,000 players and obviously that's how I like to play the game around about that number of players there and it leads to having the ability to scout anywhere in the world if you don't have a lot of those nations so for instance if you don't have the continent selected at all then those continents won't show you as many different countries as you possibly could scout in your recruitment focus now if you go forward a couple of days and head back to your recruitment focus you'll start to see what is happening with this we got 50 players being scouted in progress from the scout that we have selected uh, so if you go on that obviously these are all within the scouting range that we also selected too but the knowledge there reasonable knowledge all the way down to like minimal knowledge now the minimal knowledge players you're going to notice with attribute masking turned on, you can't really tell whether this player is going to be good or not. However, if you go back to that and have a look at the reasonable knowledge, for instance, this Leipzig player, you kind of get a good understanding like, yeah, this player is quite decent, whether he would ever sign for us or not. It's a different story, but he is very good. So that's what you need to give time with is for uh, your scout to get a better understanding of each of these players. Once you get that scouting uh, kind of done, you may see more players pop into recommendations and obviously they match exactly what you have selected in the recruitment focus or if they just miss out maybe they're not quite as good as what you have hoped then you might see a few players pop into the near matches column and that's quite a good column i think because if you're maybe a little bit too restricted on what type of player you're looking for the near matches column could actually find you some really good players that didn't quite cut it but actually you look at it give a second opinion and you want to sign them. So let's set up another focus and this time look for a wonder kid playing on that right wing. Not setting the potential too high because we want to see a number of findings and setting the age to a maximum of 22. Let's leave this as standard priority for now and see in comparison how fast the knowledge and findings is picked up. We do already have a player who matches our focus from a previous scout report again, a 20-year-old winger from FC Lorient. I went through and set up more recruitment focuses to see what they would return. 
And meanwhile, we play our first friendly against Bundesliga 2 side Darmstadt, who seem to cause us a lot of trouble and win 2-1. Either we are crying out for a new recruitment or the tactic I've thrown together is really not good. And we do have some more interesting things to check out. If we look at our DLP uh, recruitment focus, we can see we've still got that one recommendation from the previous scout and knowledge. We've got five in progress and a couple of a plus recommendations here, including Taliso and Schlager. However, we do have seven near matches, which is very good indeed. So we can take a look and the majority of them are not being picked up because they failed current ability check. And that's mainly because obviously when we have a look, we don't really set a lot of parameters. A lot of them are basically the current ability or potential ability or age, for instance. So when we're going back to this, you can see that really the only big name here or the, the best player that they have available, a B minus here, uh, is Warmerdon and they haven't continued the scout and knowledge to a full scout and knowledge because they don't actually think it's worth it. So you can obviously check and ask them to continue to scout. Uh, so the reasonable knowledge turns into full knowledge known, but like this is a good step. This is where you're going to pick up the scraps where maybe you don't really find somebody that is perfect, like this recommendation. You might not have that one, but the near matches could be a player that you would actually want to sign. Maybe it's like a backup. It's a good little addition, I think. Another nice little touch is you actually get news articles about your recruitment focus and the updates for them from your chief scout. So if you have forgot to check them for a while, you might get reminded through one of these. They give you an oversight of what you're looking for and you can select straight into that. And obviously it will show you your findings. We then sold a player to give us more room in the transfer budget. But the deep line playmaker focus we are running has finished with only one recommendation. There was one extra player in the near matches and the reason he wasn't recommended was the poor performances he displayed whilst being scouted. And I absolutely love that that is a reason, by the way. The player himself, albeit a little expensive, does look fantastic. And on the reports, it does show out of the four games attended, he played two bad games and didn't feature at all in another. I noticed that a couple of focuses appeared automatically as well, which is something you can do or turn off through the responsibilities. The top responsibility allows you to toggle whether you want somebody else to assign scouts to different focuses or do them all yourself. I even ran the same deep line playmaker focus again, and this time Santa Maria's performances helped make him into the recommendations list. But with the opening of the Bundesliga imminent, we still didn't have our new holding midfielder. So for now, the 25-year-old Croatian fills that slot against champions FC Bayern Munich. But it was their new signing, Sadio Mane, who scored the only goal of the game. I created an ongoing focus to continue throughout the season, finding me first team players to take a look within my transfer range between 18 to 30. You'll notice on your scouting update emails, you have the type column at the top. And you can see the two highlighted players here. One is an agent offering out his player from Bordeaux, and the other is from one of our recruitment focuses. It doesn't say what focus, but it does give us the information of standard priority. The following Bundesliga match was a way to hurt the Berlin, a very unpredictable side. We line up again with our 4-3-3 with Hasibi covering that DM role. He's 38, by the way. The beautiful Bundesliga graphics look awesome as we take a look at the league table after just one game week. And check out Jesper Lindstrom's opening goal of the game. What a corker. The VAR did check for offside, but as you can see, he was clearly on. I also noticed that VAR decisions seem to be a little bit quicker than what they used to, which is fantastic. Unfortunately, Hertha equalised from a corner, so we head into halftime at 1-1. We held on to the ball really well, and the DLP Hasibi was having a good game, and Lindstrom was put through and really should have put us back in the lead there. A long ball over the top punished us, and Hertha are now leading. However, at the end of the game, we did manage to pull one back through a set piece and missed two major chances at the end, but we did settle for that 1-1 draw. Back to the recruitment focus, and a great example of a near match is Zaruki. He could be a really good option and someone I might fully scout to make up my mind about. The deep line playmaker focus has now also been completed and we have some more recommendations. So in total, we actually have six recommendations here and seven near matches. And even some of the near matches have an A for recommendations, but they fail to reach the current ability check, which seems to be the reason for all of them. So let's take a look at some of the recommendations then. Now we've got an actual right back here, Gertrude, who can actually play center defense midfielder, but I think that passing is not quite the level that I would like it to be. He is probably better as a right back. 
go back on completed. That needs to change, I think. If you go back, it should take you back to the same page and not in general. I would like that to be uh, something. Let's take a look. We got an, uh, there's no point looking at that player there because he's on loan. This is the player, of course, that we already had in there that was already scouted. Uh, I'm not too interested in him either. I think some of the attributes that he has is also lacking. This is the guy, of course, who didn't play very well. And I actually think he's one of the better options that we have here 27 year old french midfielder he's a bit of a box to box as well which i like about him and he has a lot of really good mental attributes plus that natural fitness and stamina so this is a great little pickup here because of course at first he didn't make it this time round he did these two down the bottom are new for me though uh, i'm gonna take a look at this one first this dutch midfielder so yeah i don't think he is gonna be good enough for me see this is the annoying part we have to go back uh but pablo rosario now, I actually think this guy's good. He is. Oh, I think this one might be my favorite option that we have here. Now, he is wanted playing at Nice. He is wanted by Wolfsburg and Ajax. So I think I'm going to use the agent about availability. And we're going to take a look and see how much wage he wants. We know we've got about 70,000. Now, he wants 29 to 43 uh, and not too much money. Now, of course... You can now negotiate more with the agents too. So we can actually do that here. There's no easy way to put this. Pablo Rosario demands in terms of his wages are far too high for the structure of this club. Now it gets lowered. So you can do that. And depending on how patient the agent is, depends on how much you can negotiate. So we kind of had an agreement there. And if we go in and make an offer now, now we need to do this with Nice themselves. We've got about 10 million pounds. So let's bump this up. To about 9 million and they still want a little bit more. 9 million plus one after 50 games. That is fair. Now we just wait for the contract. Right, as we made that offer, we went into another Bundesliga game and we actually won 1-0. It was against Cologne and we scored a fantastic well-worked goal. What a pass by Gertz and an assist by Muani. But despite the win, I did notice our pass map was showing a big lack of ball possession in midfield and our deep line playmaker number six is not exactly where I expect him to be. Which is why I think we really need somebody like Rosario. So let's start these negotiations and see how we can get them done. Important player. Yes, I'd like him to start as many games as possible. So 38,000. Was that what we... I thought we, we uh, negotiated something a lot less than that. Now, his patience is already half empty. And maybe that is because, obviously, we spoke to him before. Okay, the backup with 38. What a start. What a promising start these discussions. Okay, so maybe a little bit less and they'll be happy with that. Okay, 35.5. Actually, that's really good. That was half of our wage budget. So if we wanted to, we probably could sign like a free agent or maybe even bring in a loan player. But a five-year contract, I think that's a really good deal to welcome into the club. He is also six foot two. So he's a presence in that midfield and has the player trait of play short, simple passes. Something that will work well in my deep line playmaker. He made his way into the deadline day though, but we managed to get our man confirmed. We stick him on the deep line playmaker training and take a look at the squad planner. He's rated much higher than our other options in that role, so we bump him up to the top spot and he's even on our best 11 page already. The supporters' expectations for the next match was to hope to see Rosario make his debut, and I did not want to disappoint them. He went straight into the team against Leipzig. And we drew that game 1-1, and Rosario played very well, and his pass map looked a lot better than the last time we looked at this. And we found him, all thanks to the FM23's new feature of Recruitment Focuses. Thank you very much for watching. On screen right now, you'll see a playlist of all the other alpha videos made by all the other fantastic creators. So make sure you check that one out.